Good morning, everyone. I'm really glad to be here, as always. Um, by all accounts, SDN is the next big thing in networking, and uh, SD-WAN is the application that's experiencing the greatest growth, um, the greatest interest, and unfortunately, the greatest hype. Yeah, it's true uh, that there is a lot of noise and hype around SD-WAN, uh, especially due to exaggerated claims. Um, and as a result, it's becoming very hard for service providers that are looking to offer SD-WAN managed services to extract the signal from the noise. Likewise, enterprises are having difficulty extracting signal from the noise. Now, the reason for this is that all the appliances, that legacy appliances that traditionally were in the branch office, such as a firewall, a van optimization device, the tired old branch router, um, or uh, even a Wi-Fi appliance that's cloud managed, all have been painted with the SD-WAN paint and are all being called SD-WAN. So service providers really have to carefully evaluate and measure what these solutions are offering against the requirements that enterprises have in terms of agility that's driven by network automation. And network automation that is end-to-end, -end, that starts from the branch to the wide area, goes all the way into the data center, um, all the way to the application workload inside the server. And these morphed, repainted, rebadged, or simplistic solutions just don't measure up. Um, because to provide this kind of end-to-end uh, -end network automation requires heavy lift. It requires a networking pedigree, and it requires a very well thought out modern architecture and platform that from the ground up has a unified policy to provide network automation end to end. Uh, from the branch to the wide area, all the way to the applications workload in the server. And that's exactly what Nuage at Nuage Networks we have done. And as a result, we have been leading the charge in SDN from the very beginning. So this morning, in the next few minutes, what I want to talk about is trying to extract the signal from the noise uh, and also to highlight some of the gaps, um, and so in some cases chasms, in, in some of these uh, solutions uh, that are purported to be SD-WAN uh, solutions. So lots to talk about, let's jump in. Um, quickly revisit how it all started. It all started by the observation that you know, the branch networking as it was being offered just didn't cut it. Um, the need of the day was order and get, what was being offered was static manual provisioning, order and wait and wait and wait. And so the first attempt was the SD-WAN 1.0, as I call it. And what SD-WAN 1.0 was all about providing IP connectivity over not just a private IP, as in IP MPLS network, but also over the internet with cloud management software that allowed for quick provisioning of branch sites. Um, and so this was a good first step. It made the transport location and uh, also device independent. Um, good first step. Some of these repainted SD-WAN solutions barely measure up to even SD-WAN 1.0. And unfortunately for them, the requirements of enterprise have actually moved on beyond the branch networking that was traditionally offered. What enterprise care about is how are they going to securely and every time connect their business users that are spread everywhere to their applications in any cloud? What they worry about is how is network automation going to help them with their multi-cloud deployment strategy, whether it is private cloud, whether it's the telco NFP cloud, whether it is the SaaS cloud, how is that going to happen? What they worry about is how are they going to leverage this SD-WAN framework of disaggregation of software from hardware to allow for them to avail these value-added services, such as firewall or such as VanOpt, at the branch or in the telco NFV data center, all the way to the workload, quickly, easily, and in a fully automated manner. And finally, what they worry about is how am I going to deliver network automation where the security now is not just about outer hard shell and soft core, but to provide micro-segmentation that's not just constrained within the data center, 
but it spreads all the way from the data center within the SD-WAN or within the VPN all the way to the branch and moves, the policy moves as the branch user moves from location to location. So how do they do that network uh, automation? So let's look at how that can be achieved. Let's start to first by looking at what are the requirements in the wide area to just offer this network automation. From that perspective, the solution has to work on any underlay, private, IP, or MPLS, uh, with uh, full uh, connectivity to uh, LTE uplinks. It has to be, it has to be multi-tenanted. That's absolutely table stakes requirement. Uh, even for enterprises doing DIY, some large enterprises need multi-tenancy. It has to offer end-to-end -end application SLA through those disjoint underlays, end-to-end -end from every branch to every branch to any application in any cloud. It has to provide full mesh connectivity. Uh, it has to support these value-added services according to the SDN, uh, SDN framework. Um, and the flexibility to avail them in branch or in the data center. It has to connect seamlessly to the MPLS, existing MPLS VPNs. They're not going anywhere. In fact, it's been proven that some of the underlays in many regions, uh, the private or internet underlays, just are not adequate. And so MPLS underlays are quite important. But what's also important to enterprises is to be able to seamlessly connect the SD-WAN with their existing MPLS VPNs and get that visibility and micro-segmentation end-to-end. And all this at high performance and massive scale. Now let's look at the requirements of cloud-centric. So in terms of NFV, telco, DC, or private clouds, what is required is to be able to support any hypervisor, KVM, ASXi, or Hyper-V, any workload, bare metal container or virtual machine, that works over greenfield or uh, brownfield sw switching because there's a ton of investment that has already gone into building these data centers. So it has to work over brownfield. It has to be multi-DC. It has to be multi-tenanted. It has to have micro-segmentation, just not a, in, in that one DC, but multi-DC. Uh, and it has to be in any combination every time with high performance and scale. But of course, to give and look at the entire solution, we have to look at comprehensively both sides. And, and so if we are solving for agility, we have to look for both the wide area network requirements, look at the cloud requirements, and solve them over the SD end goal, which is to increase agility by massively automating and simplifying network operations. It's about abstracting network capabilities says that you can use uniform hardware, which is open, not some proprietary hardware. And at the end of the day, it has to be end-to-end -end network automation. So what we get by looking at it this way is if you want to solve for agility, what you get is this formula of network automation. And with this formula, what we can do is we can measure up all these other SD-WAN, purported SD-WAN solutions in the market. But to just give you an understanding of what it takes to actually solve for agility, taking into account all these requirements and solving them and adhering to the SDN principles, you get this. You get a customer networking and security that's end-to-end -end that allows for any business users to connect securely to applications anywhere. It's a unified, single API solution, which is highly multi-tenanted. There's no restrictions in how the overlays are constructed that go from branch, which offers open x86-based uh, CPEs that have the ability to host virtual network functions, to any other branch at scale, to any SaaS overlays, fully automated, allows for full connectivity to MPLS VPNs uh, seamlessly without breaking the automation, goes all the way to the telco NFE workloads inside for service chaining as required, um, and without, again, breaking automation. And it does that with high performance and scale. If you do this, what you get is you get to deliver IT services over any IP network. And that is what is SD-WAN 2.0.
the, that means the evolved requirements. So let's go back to that formula. And let's, as I said, how do we extract the signal from the noise in a very, very crowded market? So let's start with the cloud-managed um, solution that has been repainted as SD-WAN. A cloud-managed, uh, first and foremost, there's no support whatsoever for connecting to any of the data centers. Uh, forget going into the data center to the application workload. Second, it's being offered by proprietary solution, proprietary CPE, which is closed. Third, there's very limited support to go, have the on-ramps to uh, the public clouds. Fourth, and which is really critical, is it's vendor managed. And so as a service provider, you are basically giving the keys of the kingdom to the vendor to operate that for you. So imagine there is fault in the network. You have no visibility because the vendor is managing that. Imagine if you want to do custom API work to offer some value added services. There's no chance because it's a closed CPE in the first place. But there's no single uh, extensive API that's offered. And finally, it's not multi-tenanted. It was designed for Wi-Fi type apl applications. And so it offers very limited scale of IPsec connections. It basically just doesn't measure up to SD-WAN 2.0. It barely measures up to SD-WAN 1.0. Let's look at cloud-based um, control and data path where everything is drawn up. Um, this is a rather simplistic SD-WAN solution because what this means is it provides connectivity, which is full and always connectivity from the vendor-managed gateways that are placed. The service provider does not manage these gateways. These gateways are single-tenanted, and all the connectivity is through these gateways. That creates a lot of issues in terms of data privacy because you might have a branch in Philippines that somehow is going to a gateway that's hosted in Singapore, of all places, just to talk to another branch in the Philippines. So it cre it's, it's just a very, very basic solution that's constructed in a rather closed manner. It's a simplistic solution that allows for very small two, three offices to be connected together uh, uh, with a, this hub and spoke model, which allows for control and data to be pulled up. It's not fully um, multi-tenanted and has limited control. And then just because its sister solution in the data center is also has the same name doesn't mean that it offers seamless connectivity all the way in, inside the data center. It's two different and two distinct solutions. Again, doesn't measure up to SD-WAN 1.0. Forget SD-WAN 2.0. This is also quite interesting. The WAN optimization and firewall appliances that have been there, these are appliances that never graduated. They've been there forever, sitting next to that branch router. They've never graduated to replace even that branch router. And now they're suddenly doing SD-WAN. So it's obvious that, first and foremost, they're proprietary closed appliances that has no chance of offering any VNF at the branch site. They have incrementally produced some cloud-based management, but it's limited. And it's simply not built to offer managed services because it's not multi-tenanted. That was never how it was designed, how these solutions were designed in the first place. They have no uh, connectivity that is offered to connect to MPLS VPNs. Very basic networking capabilities, and of course, no thought of connecting all the way inside a fully automated telco cloud. So again, big gaps, repainted SD-WAN doesn't measure up to the true requirements of providing end-to-end -end network automation. And then finally, this one. The old, you know, tired old router, as I said, closed proprietary system that's being rebranded as SD-WAN. Talk about trying to fit a new 
acquired technology square peg in the round hole of this proprietary branch router. That new technology, first of, uh, first of all, was also designed with a closed CPE in mind. So there is very limited options in terms of the ability to do VNFs at the brand site. To allow for any public um, cloud connectivity is extremely limited. And there is just zero multi-tenancy because that acquired technology of SD-WAN was built with enterprise and a single customer in mind. So it offers no multi-tenancy whatsoever. In fact, the answer to multi-tenancy is host these controllers per enterprise in AWS for every enterprise. That's hardly multi-tenancy. That hardly you know, solves the problem that enterprises ultimately need, which is what the service providers must deliver to them. Agility delivered through uh, network automation end-to-end. -end. And it, of course, offers no legacy VPN connectivity. And it also provides very limited and complex connectivity through a different solution, uh, completely uh, different uh, APIs uh, to connect inside the data center. Again, fails the test completely in terms of providing end-to-end -end network automation. So in conclusion, to deliver business agility and meet these evolved requirements of enterprise IT, SD-WAN truly is the foundational technology. It is SD-WAN 2.0 that you have to keep in mind because that is the one that not only takes in the requirements of the wide area, but also considers the requirements of what it takes to provide automation end-to-end -end all the way inside the data center to the hypervisor where the applications are hosted. You have to carefully evaluate these network automation solutions that are offered against the ultimate goal of delivering agility, of connecting users, business users, securely every time, in any condition, to their applications anywhere. Watch out for these morphed, rebadged, or simplistic solutions because they simply don't cut it. And mind the gaps as you get on this SD-WAN train. Thank you.